Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy wait. Whose birthday is it? It's kids' church birthday. Yeah. Kids' church on lockdown just turned ten. Happy, Happy birthday, dear kids' church. On lockdown. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Hooray! 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 His love, and yet He died to save me. Died upon the cross. I'm following the King. I'm ready to obey, to listen to His word. Yes, Jesus is my King. I'm living now for Him, 'cause Jesus is my King. I don't deserve His mercy. I don't deserve His love. And yet He died to save me. Died upon the cross. I'm following the King. I'm ready to obey, to listen to His word. Yes, Jesus is my King. I'm living now for Him, 'cause He. Well, it's another week of kids' church in lockdown. Yeah. We've now had a whole term of kids' church being in lockdown, and a whole term of not going to school. Yeah, lockdown is meaning that lots of people are missing out on doing things they're used to doing. Not only did I miss school, I also missed seeing my friends. And exactly right, and, and lots of people are missing out on other things too. You think of people who have had birthdays yeah. who can't have birthday parties. There's Chloe. And Yanjing, and Sarah, and of course, don't forget, baby Oliver. Can't forget, baby Oliver. All these people have missed out on having parties because Chil of lockdown. Children can't even play sport because of lockdown. But lockdown has meant frustration for some women because some women haven't been able to go and get their hair cut because all the hairdressers are closed. <laughs> some people are frustrated because the shops are closed. Well, is that a bad thing? Mm, I hate shopping. <laughs> you do. No one in our family particularly <laughs> likes shopping. And, and do you know some people? Because well, because of lockdown, people can't even come to church. The doors of the church are shut. Kids' church <laughs> can't happen. Yeah. Some people, even though it's the holidays, people can't go to the movies or anywhere because of lockdown. Yeah, we're 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 stuck in home at home, aren't we? We mm. can't go anywhere. Do you know lockdown has actually been really really hard and unpleasant. For lots of people, not just young people, but also older people. I was thinking what Auntie Isabel told us a little while ago. She said about how she uh, she said that lockdown is harder than living in World War II.、Uh, Auntie Isabel lived in London during World War II when London was being bombed, and she actually said that living through COVID and lockdown is harder than living in World War II. How so? Well, I guess it's because during World War Two, people could go and give each other a hug, or support each other, or cry with each other when they were really sad.、Mm. But now, Auntie Isabel says, rather than trying to avoid the bombs falling from the sky, it's like people treat you like you're the bomb because they want to stay away from you、yeah. and avoid you because they somehow think you are dangerous.、And、I think that's why she says it's so hard living in lockdown. I guess it's lonely for a lot of people, even people who live on their own. And I guess that's how the person in today's Bible story felt. The person in today's Bible story had something called leprosy. What's leprosy? Well, if you come over here, I'll show you. Well, leprosy is a skin condition that affects the skin, and it makes the skin go light in colour. Have a look at this. It was like people's skin had 
really visible dots all over it. And it's actually leprosy is a, a bacteria that affects the skin. It particularly affects the hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It also, oh yes, it affects the oh. <laughs> Affects the yeah, hands. In your head, then. It affects also, would you believe, it even affects the eyes. And leprosy even affects the nose of some people. It's an awful, awful condition. People actually even lost feeling in these parts of their body where they had that leprosy. It must have been terrible. And making it worse was that no one knew how to have a cure for leprosy. People, these days, we know how to treat leprosy. We give people medicines and over a few months they'll get better. But back in the days of Jesus, there was no way you could cure people. And what was worse was people thought if you had leprosy, you were incredibly, incredibly Infectious. I guess it's a bit like COVID. <laughs> I guess so. People didn't want to go near anyone who had leprosy because they thought, oh dear, I might get leprosy too. And they thought if you went near them, because it was so infectious, you, you might catch it. So people would stay away from people with leprosy. If anyone with leprosy came near, they'd say, go away, go away. And mums and dads would grab their little children and pull them away from leprosy, leprosy saying, stay away from that person. So where did the people live? Well, they had to live away from everyone else. They couldn't go to the shops. They couldn't go to schools. They certainly couldn't go and play with their friends. And they couldn't go and worship in the temple or go to church. I guess it's a bit like lockdown. I guess so. But what was even worse was they were thought to be unclean. And that meant they couldn't be friends with... God. So what happens in today's Bible story? Well, it's a story from Matthew chapter 8 in the Bible. And we're going to go and read about how Jesus met a leper. Well, this is what we read about this story of Jesus meeting this leper. The Bible says, One day Jesus came down from the mountainside and a large crowd followed him. Then a man with this terrible sickness called leprosy came and knelt before Jesus. And the man with leprosy said, Jesus, if you are willing, you can make me clean. So the man knew that Jesus could make him better. That's right. And that's why he said, Lord, if, if you, you are willing, willing you, you can, can make, make me, me clean. clean. Well, Jesus knelt down beside the man and then he did something amazing. He touched the man and said, I am willing. And then Jesus gently said to the man, be clean. And amazingly, the man was healed of his leprosy. That's amazing. Not only the Jesus healed the man from his leprosy, he touched him. No one else would touch him but Jesus. And instead of the uncleanness going from the man to Jesus, it was the other way around. Jesus passed the cleanness onto the man. Jesus passed the cleanness to the man. Exactly yeah. right. And it's a good reminder of this story that Jesus shows incredible love and compassion towards people. That Jesus has the power to heal them. And just like Jesus was able to make that man clean, Jesus can make us clean. Because we too have a sickness, worse than leprosy. <laughs> yeah. It's called sin. And Jesus can clean us of our sin so that we can be friends with God again. And that's why we should thank God. So yong -sun, do you want to thank God that Jesus not only had the power to heal the man of leprosy, but also can forgive us of our sins in Jesus? Dear God, thank you that you care and love us so much that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross to forgive our sins. Please help us to keep on trusting you even in the midst of COVID. Please keep the doctors and nurses who care for these people to stay safe and not to catch COVID themselves. Please help us to tell others that you love and care for us even if it is hard. We thank you for your love and care for us even when we rebel against you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, now it's time for a Bible verse with Nicola. I'm back with another Bible verse. I wonder what it says today. Why don't we pop it up on the screen and we can have a look together. This is from Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. And it says, don't worry about anything. No matter what happens, tell God about everything. Ask and pray and give thanks to him. 
Well, it says that we shouldn't worry because we can just tell God everything. And in fact, whenever we are worried or scared, we should tell God. We can always ask him for help and we can thank him that he does help us feel better when we're scared. And you know what? We should, just, we should do it all the time because that's what the Bible says to us. God is the only one who can help us every time when we are worried. So why don't we do some words for the boys and girls at home? Are you ready? Are you ready at home? Yan Jing, should I worry? No. Should I worry? No. Well, whatever does happen, should I worry? No. Ask and pray to God with thanks. So should I worry? No. I wonder if you at home can do it with us. Shall we do it one more time? Yan Jing, should I worry? No. Should I worry? No. Whatever does happen, should I worry? No. Ask and pray to God with thanks. So Yan Jing, should I worry? No. Why don't we pop this verse up one more time so that we can read it together and be reminded of what God says about worrying. He says, don't worry about anything. No matter what happens, tell God about everything. Ask and pray and give thanks to him. Now, oh, oh no, I've forgotten what's coming next. Oh, is it, is it the Bible verse? No, we just did the Bible verse. Maybe it's, maybe, maybe it's the, the story or the, or the, or the or is it Young Son's Bible jokes? Auntie Nicola, don't worry. Oh, thank you, Yandy. And again, Yong Sun's looking really strange. And again, he's doing something really, really strange. Have a look what he's doing. Yong Sun, why are you looking so sad? And what on earth are you doing? What's going on? My jokes are way too crummy. Oh, well, at least these are, these are looking like they're tasty crumbs. They are tasty crumbs. Mm. Oh. Do you have any jokes for us that might not be crummy then? <laughs> I sure do. Okay. All right. Who are these jokes from? The first jokes have been sent in by a few people, actually. The same joke by a few people? Yeah. Oh, who sent it in? Auntie Joy, Auntie Nicola and Grandpa Ken. And Grandpa Ken, okay. Do you want to tell us what the joke is? All right. How did Moses make his morning coffee? I don't know. How did Moses make his morning coffee? How he brews it. Hebrews, get it? Oh, the Israelites are called the Hebrews. He brews it. Oh, that's really good. Maybe they didn't drink coffee. Coffee's not so good. <laughs> well, I don't think so anyway. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Yeah, you got that's... another joke for us? All right. Who played the first tennis match in the Bible? I don't know. Who did play in the first tennis match in the Bible? I don't know. Joseph, he served in Pharaoh's court. Oh, Joseph, he served in <laughs> yeah. Pharaoh's court. He served. Oh, they're good jokes. I don't think they were too crummy at all. Mm. <laughs> well, I wonder, do you need more jokes still? Yes. Send them in to Mike at battlebaybaptist.org.au and we'll, you'll find my joke, your jokes in my place. With Young Sons Bible Jokes. Well, today we're going to learn about another country and pray for this country that is located in South America. We're going to give everyone some clues and you can try and guess what the country is. The population of this country is 214 million people. Yeah, that's the fifth largest country in the world. And in this country, people live mostly near the coast. The middle of this country has very few people living in it. I guess it's a little bit like Australia. And the cities, the people live in, a lot of people live in slums in the cities. Take a look at this picture here, what it looks like in the cities. Yeah. Got any other clues? Yep, the people of this country love sport, but the number one sport is soccer. Take a look at this picture. Yeah, the national animal of this country is the jaguar. The national bird is the macaw, and the colours of this country, like Australia, are green and yellow. Well, we have green and gold, but they have green yeah. and yellow. It's a bit hard to guess, isn't it? Yeah. Can you guess what this country is yet? The currency of this country is the real. One real equals 26 cents in Australia. Mm. This country was actually 
founded and colonised by the Portuguese in 18, uh, 1532, but this country then declared independence from Portugal in 1822. Barbecue meat is a famous food in the country. Oh, yum, it looks delicious. It's a hard country to guess, isn't it? You got any more clues for us that might help us? The Amazon rainforest covers 60% of this country. Yeah, that's a really good clue. And here's another good clue, I think. In 2016, the Olympics were held in this country in the city of Rio. I I'm wonder sure, if you remember that. I'm sure you've guessed it now. And the country is Brazil. And here is a map of Brazil, so you know exactly where it is. It's in South America. It's a very large country there in South America, isn't it? Mm. Well, you know, in this country, 90% of the people in this country say they are Christian. 66% so there's a lot of people, mm -hmm. are Catholics. Now, these Catholics believe in Jesus, but for lots of these Catholics, they often take their authority from the Pope rather than the Bible. So how do we pray for Brazil? Well, we've got a few things we can pray for in this country. This country has a very rapidly growing evangelical church, yeah. and we can pray for spiritual maturity in that church. Mm. We can also pray for those people who live in slums that the Spirit of God would really powerfully transform their lives and bring them to understand Jesus. And we can pray for missionaries to go into this country because you know, in that Amazon rainforest mm -hmm. that's so big, they reckon there's about 130 unreached people groups who've never ever heard about Jesus. So we should pray for missionaries to go, them, go there and tell them about Jesus. Dear God, Please help the people of Brazil to come to know you. Please help the church to keep on growing. We ask you to transform the lives of many people in urban slums. May missionaries be sent in areas to Brazil and turn people to know you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Well, today we've seen that Jesus has healed a man with leprosy. Uh, and we've also heard a verse from the Bible that says we shouldn't worry. We should always pray to God and ask for his help when we are worried about anything. Because God is in control and he is in charge of everything. So this song is about no matter what we do, we can always look to God because he is the one that we make our moves in. And he is the one who gives us breath. And he is the one who shows us the way to go. So why don't we sing this one together?
Cause Jesus is my King I don't deserve His mercy I don't deserve His love And yet He died to save me Died upon the cross Done? Is that better? That's everything? That's a wrap? <laughs> Great job. I think that was hate. <laughs> <laughs>